Are you looking at your lineup here for week four and debating on who to start at the wide receiver position? Let's see who we can start and sit here for week four. What is going on, everybody? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Welcome back to the next episode here, talking week four wide receivers and who we should start and who we should sit. We'll get into the list here in just a second. I got about 40 names for you, each matchup, a couple names in each matchup, who you should be looking at and who you shouldn't be looking at. But before we get started into this list, after this episode is over, go on to uh, Rotoballer there on the YouTube channels, look it up, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell. We got a lot of great content over there also. And the live shows on Sundays have been a huge hit. Last minute injuries, weather, start sit advice. It all happens there Sunday uh, afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you're checking that out. But for right now, let's talk about some week four wide receivers. Starting off on Thursday night, you got the Vikings at the Rams. So you got the Vikings team who the first two weeks looked great. And then they looked horrible against the uh, Bills last week. And you got the Rams team who's been solid, consistent, looks great on both sides of the football but are now down their two starting cornerbacks in Marcus Peters and Akeem Tlaib. I expect a lot more offense in this game than we had probably originally planned when we saw the schedule come out. Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs for the Minnesota Vikings, to me, are must-starts this week. They're going to try to get back on track in Minnesota. They're going to struggle running the ball against that defensive front of the Rams. Uh, with their starting DBs out, Diggs and Thielen could have themselves a great, great week. Both are solid options. I uh, like the touchdown upsides, and like I said, starting both of them. On the Rams side of the ball, you have Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup. I like two of these guys this week. I think Cooks and Woods both have high, high upside. Woods is obviously now one of the top targets in that offense and has been, you know, has been force-fed the ball, it feels like. Cooks has got that big playability, the touchdown upside. Cup has been kind of more of the safety valve and a little bit less dependable. Uh, definitely starting up Cooks and Woods. Cup, I'm going to sit this week. I'm expecting a lot more offense than maybe we were both thinking. Moving to Sunday now, you got the Jets at the Jags. And there's really only a couple names to talk about in this game. For the Jets, we're going to talk about Quincy Anunwa, somebody who we've mentioned a lot and probably the most consistent target in that passing offense, maybe outside of blah, pa there for the, for the Jets. But I'm not on the Quincy bandwagon this week. And yes, it mostly has to do with that Jaguars defense. More than likely, he's going to be shadowed by Jalen Ramsey. And the, and the Jets offense has started to look like they're trying to spread the ball out a little bit more. Trying to get, you know, Jermaine Curse, Robbie Anderson, Terrell Pryor. Trying to get something going there so it's not all Quincy all the time. They put all their eggs in that basket and it worked for a few weeks. But until they can kind of even things out, I expect a lot of the defensive attention going towards Quincy's way, and I'm going to sit him here for week four. On the Jaguar side of the football, we're going to talk about Keelan Cole. He's probably their, their biggest upside play in that offense. He's got the high touchdown upside, the big playability. The dude made a crazy catch a couple weeks ago. He's, he's got the talent. He just needs the targets and the workload. It's possible that he sees it this week. Uh, the Jets' defense is slightly underrated, and it kind of depends on, on Leonard Fournette. If Leonard Fournette is there and running the ball, that takes some of the defensive pressure and shifts it into the box and makes things a little bit easier for Keelan Cole. So if Leonard Fournette plays this week, it's a definite start for me, uh, even if he doesn't, though. If Fournette does sit and you're looking for a flex play due to some buys or something like that, then I'd, I'd put him as a flex spot only this week for Week 4. Dolphins and Pats are next up on the list, so we'll start off with the Dolphins, and really it's just Kenny Stills. There was a lot of trick plays last week with uh, Jakeem Grant and Albert Wilson had a nice touchdown, but it's somewhat inconsistent. And I don't know if we can count on that week in and week out. Kenny Stills may be the most uh, safe, the most safe, if y'all want to say the most safe. I know that's not proper English, but we're going to keep it because I'm not going to edit this out. But he may be the most safe option in that offense. High touchdown upside uh, on an offense that is heavily favoring the pass right now. They can't get the run game going in Miami. They're throwing the ball a lot. And if Kenny Stills can get some of this pressure taken off him by some of these other trick plays and these other guys stepping up, only makes things easier for him. Love the upside. And I'm starting Kenny Stills in a game that they're going to have to throw against the New England Patriots. On the Patriots side of the football, we got Chris Hogan, who's been highly inconsistent. And we got Josh Gordon, who's just been high. However, it looks like he's gotten everything back on track and, and he's going to get a huge opportunity here for the Patriots. Whether he starts this week or not, it's still up in the air. And even if he does play, how many snaps does he get? I highly doubt Belichick's going to come out and tell us the truth. 
However, with these guys in an offense led by Tom Brady, who is going to have to throw the ball, now that Rex Burkhead's on IR, that's one less running back they have to uh, fit into the game plan. They're going to be throwing the ball. they got to get things back on track. Julian Edelman comes back soon, but this offense needs to start clicking. They don't want to lose to a division rival uh, and go down more games than they already are. Uh, either one of these guys, Chris Hogan or Josh Gordon, however, I am not starting either one of them any higher than a flex play this week just because of their, their current inconsistencies and the unknown workload of Josh Gordon. Eagles and Titans are next, so we'll have Alshon Jeffrey, possibly, Nelson Aguilar and Jordan Matthews. Yeah, you probably don't have Jordan Matthews, so don't worry about him. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey was just cleared for contact. Whether he's going to suit up or not on Sunday yet, we don't know for sure. Need to monitor the practice reports there, but even if he does play, I'm not expecting him to go out there and get a huge number of snaps in his first week in a long time. If you have him, look forward to him coming back, but I'm not starting Alshon Jeffrey this week. Nelson Aguilar is somebody who you know is one of the top target leaders the first couple weeks of the season, but you got to remember, Nelson Aguilar is not Carson Wentz's guy. Even with Carson Wentz last year, he was not his top target. Alshon Jeffrey was, and along with the tight ends. The tight ends looked great last week. I think that was a little bit more of a game plan type decision to get those tight ends involved, but now all of a sudden, Al, uh, Nelson Aguilar gets a little bit more riskier than he was. He only had five targets last week and wasn't as involved in weeks past. I'm not giving up on Nelson Aguilar, but I'm not starting him either unless he's a flex play only. On the Titans side of the football, we're going to talk about Corey Davis, but we're not going to talk about it very long because that Titans offense is horrible. Still don't know if it's going to be Mariota or Gabbert. Davis has been inconsistent at best. Only had two catches last week for 30-some yards. Nothing you want to deal with right now. Until that Tennessee offense can get things going, I'm sitting Corey Davis. Texans at Colts is next, and I expect a lot of passing offense in this game. Actually, starting off with the Texans, you got DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller. Do I really need to sit here and waste your time and tell you to start DeAndre Hopkins and start Will Fuller? Lord, I hope not. If you have them, please start them both. On the Colts side of the football, you got T.Y. Hilton and Ryan Grant, who we'll talk about, and I do like both this week. Both will be starts for me. T.Y. is a, a fringe wide receiver one, a high-end wide receiver two. Grant is no more than a flex play in deeper leagues. But I do like where the offense is starting to slowly go. T.Y. Hilton is obviously Andrew Luck's favorite target, and he's going to look for him a lot. Ryan Grant, though, is somebody who's benefiting from that. The defenses know that Andrew Luck is trying to get the ball to T.Y. Hilton, and Ryan Grant is just, you know, being consistent here in the background. If you got somebody on by or you got somebody dealing with injuries, Grant's a great flex play. And like I said, you're starting T.Y. Hilton this week against a, a Houston Texans team who's, who's given up a lot of yardage through the air. Bills and Packers are next, and which Bills team is going to show up? The first two-week Bills or the week three Bills? Who knows? Anybody who caught that little uh, animation they had on social media showed the Bills plane flying over to Minnesota. The only problem is the plane landed in Wisconsin, so they were a week early. But whatever, here they are playing against Green Bay, and I still don't trust a whole lot of options in this offense. You got Kelvin Benjamin, Zay Jones. Yeah, I'm not starting either one of them unless you're like in a 14-team league or larger. And even then, it's a gamble. Too risky for me. On the Packers side of the football, you got Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, and Geronimo Allison. Now, the injury with Rodgers is just kind of hampering the upside of all three of these guys, and they've kind of turned into touchdown-dependent plays. However, this week against the Bills defense, that even though they looked great last week, they did. They looked way improved on defense, and they were flying around shutting down a passing offense that was very effective uh, in weeks past for Minnesota. However, they still gave up a lot of receptions. Maybe not a whole lot of yardage and touchdowns, but they were still giving up the receptions. I actually like all three of these plays this week. Devontae Adams and Randall Cobb. Uh, Adams is a wide receiver one. Cobb Moore is a low-end wide receiver two flex play. Allison has a flex play only. But yes, all three of these guys would be in my starting lineup if needed be. Uh, you just kind of have to make sure you put them in the right spot. Like I said, Adams is a one, Cobb is a low end two or a three if you have three wide receivers in your league, and then Allison has a flex play, uh, but I like the upside of all three of them. Lions at Cowboys is next, and we'll start off with the trio of wide receivers in Detroit that is, I can't say they're unstoppable, but you can't take away all three of these guys. You got Marvin Jones, Golden Tate, and now Kenny Galladay to concern, you concern yourself with, and, and the emergence of Carrion Johnson is almost the key to this also. If they can get that run game going and pull defenders back into the box trying to contain on Johnson, that only opens up the field more for the guys uh, that I just named. All three of these guys will be starts for me. Now Dallas has a decent pass defense. It's their pass rush that's more elite. They haven't intercepted the ball yet, and they haven't really seen an offense yet similar to the one in Detroit. 
Like I said, if Kerryon Johnson can get going early, I like all three of these guys, and all three of them will be starts for me here in week four. And don't be surprised if all three of these guys are close to 1,000 yards by the end of the season. It's just the offense they play in with Matthew Stafford, who's going to throw the ball a lot. On the Cowboys side of things, it's a completely different story. Uh, right now, I'm not starting anybody over there at all at the wide receiver position. I'm not even really thinking about it. Like, There's no debates about it. I'm not questioning it. I'm not even trying to look for a reason for it. I'm not starting any of the wide receivers in Dallas right now. Bucks at Bears is next, and uh, Fitzmagic is still alive. Yep, he's still out there, still kicking, still rocking the beard, and people are loving it. Now, some people tried to quickly jump off the bandwagon last week when he threw a few interceptions, but then the dude still threw for over 400 yards and is producing elite fantasy numbers. They got Chris Godwin, Deshaun Jackson, and Mike Evans there for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and even though this defense is improved for Chicago, the pass rush is elite, obviously, with Khalil Mack, but the wide receivers they have in Tampa Bay don't need a whole lot of time to get deep on routes, especially Deshaun Jackson and Chris Godwin. These are guys that can get a lot of quick dump-off passes this week. Evans may not have himself quite as high of a wide receiver one week, uh, but I, I, like, I like all three of these guys. Uh, Evans will be a start for me as a high-end wide receiver, too. You got Chris Godwin and Deshaun Jackson, both as flex plays with upside. But yeah, I, I clearly uh, expect the, this Tampa Bay offense to continue to rely on the pass. They can't get the run game going. Uh, Peyton Barber gets the ball, runs to the offensive line, and falls down. And Ronald Jones can't even get an active designation. So, yeah, they're throwing the ball a lot in Tampa Bay. And as, far, as long as that's happening, I'm starting all three of these guys at their respective positions. On to the Bears now, and we'll talk about Allen Robinson and Taylor Gabriel now that we're not going to have uh, Anthony Miller in the mix this week. And I really like the upside of both of these guys. We just talked about how Tampa Bay can put up points uh, quickly in the passing offense. Chicago is going to have to stay involved, and Mitch Trubisky is really not the deep, down-the-field type of quarterback that can supply multiple weapons. I've already talked about Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen in the running back video, but I really like the upside of both Robinson and Gabriel this week. Uh, both are the type of receivers that could get a large amount of volume. May not be huge yardage, but Gabriel especially has that ability to break a big play at any time, and they're going to have to lean on him a little bit more this week than they have in the past few weeks. Love the upside for both of them. Uh, Allen Robinson will be a wide receiver two for me this week. And uh, Taylor Gabriel Moore is a flex play option with huge upside. Bengals and Falcons are next, and I expect a lot of offense in this game, especially on the passing side of the football. Uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals, you have A.J. Green still banged up with that groin injury, and we don't really know what his status is going to be, whether he's going to play or not or even be limited. Uh, but even if he is, uh, we're going to Tyler Boyd. Look what Tyler Boyd did last week. Six catches for 132 yards and a touchdown. A lot of that happened after A.J. Green went down with the groin injury. Now, if A.J. plays and is limited, uh, I'm a little worried to start A.J. Green this week. And obviously, if you have him, it's really hard to sit him. But if you have other options on your bench, I'm dropping A.J. Green down to a flex play only, at least until we can get some more clarification on the extent of his injury. I just don't want to be heavily reliant upon him as one of my top two wide receivers uh, with the possibility that he can't go with that groin injury. Tyler Boyd, on the other hand, is a solid flex play regardless. He's 100% healthy. He's a big play part of that offense. And he's somebody who's going to see close to 10 targets every single week. And he has the touchdown upside. So, yeah, Tyler Boyd is a flex play start only for me. Uh, on the other side of the football, you got the Atlanta Falcons. Calvin Ridley all of a sudden looks like uh, the second coming of Julio Jones with touchdown upside. Yeah, I mean, he's scored more touchdowns so far this year than Julio had all of last year. And the, that offense is just clicking. And it's really not reliant on Julio Jones here lately. Calvin Ridley has been the big play guy. And both of these guys are going to remain starts for me this week. Calvin Ridley, uh, he's almost in the category of wide receiver two, but we need to be a little bit patient with that. He, right now he's a f solid, solid weekly flex play. Julio Jones is going to stay there as a, as a low-end wide receiver one right now and in hopes that the uh, the production here over the past few weeks of Calvin Ridley draws a little bit more of the defense's attention and hopefully Julio can get free on a few big plays. But both of them this week in, in a favorable matchup, starting both of them, uh, like I said, Julio as a wide receiver, one low end, and Ridley as a flex play. Seahawks at Cardinals is next, and this may be one of the ugliest passing games of the week. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one. Both offenses are struggling. They tried to get Chris Carson in the run game going in Seattle last week, and I can see something similar to that this week. You got Brandon Marshall and Tyler Lockett. I'm sitting Brandon Marshall. Tyler Lockett will be a flex play at best in deeper leagues. On the Arizona side of the football, I'm going to sit Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, this may be the very first start for Josh Rosen. 
Did not look too great at the end of last week's games, but he was kind of thrown into it at a point in which he shouldn't been. Uh, but that, that offense in Arizona is just horrible. If anybody gets a, gets a big boost in value in that Arizona offense right now, I'm looking at Christian Kirk. He's definitely somebody who could see almost 10 targets a week. He's already been one of the favorite targets of Josh Rosen, even back in the preseason in minicamp. Uh, Christian Kirk is somebody I would go out and grab if you have spot on your roster. You may not want to start him this week, but he could turn into a solid weekly flex play. But as far as this week goes, I'm not touching anybody here. Browns and Raiders are next. So we'll be talking about Jarvis Landry and Antonio Callaway first for the Cleveland Browns. Both are going to be starts for me this week. Jarvis Landry is going to get to the point where he's fringe wide receiver one for me, especially in PPR leagues. The volume he'll see on a weekly basis is just going to be out of this world. Uh, Antonio Callaway is also coming up. He's going to be close to 10 targets a week also, but as of right now, is no more than a flex play uh, until we can get a little bit more tape on him and, and a little bit more understanding of if this, this usage that they're giving him is going to stay consistent or not. Some of it may start transitioning David Njoku's way, just something we need to pay attention to, but I like the way this offense is going. Baker Mayfield made that offense in Cleveland look different. He opens up the running game because now uh, you know, Carlos Hyde doesn't have to worry about eight guys in the box because the defense has to pull things back because they know Baker can beat them down the field. Love the offense going forward to the Cleveland Browns, and I'm starting both of these guys there. As far as the Oakland Raiders go, is there is there another duo out there outside of Amari Cooper and Jordy Nelson that is more inconsistent on a weekly basis? They either look out of this world amazing or absolutely horrible. Hit me up down in the comment section. Give me another duo on a another wide receiver duo in the NFL that is combined more inconsistent than Amari Cooper and Jordy Nelson. Let's see what people come up with. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, though, this week that Cleveland defense is much improved and doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. And being that Cooper and and Nelson are so inconsistent, and all the problems they got going on in Oakland with the front office and the the roster management, nothing's going right in Oakland right this second. I'm going to sit both Amari Cooper and Jordy Nelson. Saints and Giants are next, so we'll be talking about Michael Thomas and Ted Ginn here. Uh, Michael Thomas, if you have him, you're starting him every single week. I'm almost even contemplating starting him on his bye week. He's doing so good. Uh, But Ted Ginn is somebody who may not be putting up huge numbers. And I was joking about Michael Thomas for all those haters getting ready to go down in the comment section. I was joking. Uh, But Ted Ginn is somebody who we, we need to constantly pay attention to. He's one of Drew Brees' top targets in that offense. His numbers are not huge by any means. But the touchdowns are there, and it's somebody that Drew looks for, especially when the defense starts keying in on Michael Thomas. Now, obviously, Thomas and Kamara are going to get the bulk of these these targets, like we said, but Ted Ginn is next in line uh, in that offense, and as a flex play only, I'm all aboard Ted Ginn. On to the Giants now, so you have Odell Beckham and Sterling Shepard this week. Obviously, you're starting Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham against Michael Thomas, yeah, you got him, you start him. I don't care who they're playing. But I really like Sterling Shepard this week. No Evan Ingram for the Giants this week. And a lot of those targets are going to be going Sterling Shepard's way. Now, the Saints haven't been able to exactly stop anybody this year. And a lot of the defensive attention is going to be paid to Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham. What does that do? A lot of single coverage for Sterling Shepard got in the end zone last week. And I expect a big game from him this week. I would actually feel comfortable starting Sterling Shepard in a league where maybe you're decimated by injuries or you have players on by. I would start Sterling Shepard as a solid low-end wide receiver two this week with upside. Love Sterling Shepard this week and the possibility he can get into the end zone maybe once, maybe even twice. Niners and Chargers are next, and we won't spend a whole lot of time on the Niners now that Jimmy G is gone. I mean, I kind of feel like we need a moment of silence for Marquise Goodwin. I hate it. I was high on Marquise Goodwin coming into the season. Thought he was going to have a huge year getting close to 1,000 yards and maybe even flirt with the, the chance of you know, seven to 10 touchdowns. But with C.J. Beathard, I'm not counting on that anymore. Uh, C.J. Beathard may rely a little bit more heavily on a Pierre Garçon in that offense than a Marquise Goodwin. Hate that that happened to Marquise Goodwin. If you got him, um, try to package him in a trade if possible and do it quickly because the more he plays with C.J. Beathard, I have a feeling his his value is going to start going down. Hate to say it, but I'm not starting him uh, this week. Pierre Garçon, if you have him, You probably don't. A lot of people weren't rostering Pierre Garçon. But if anybody gets somewhat of an improvement in production, I can see it going Pierre's way over Goodwin's way. Uh, But at the very best is a flex play in deeper leagues. Uh, I'm just not that faithful in C.J. Beathard. The Chargers, on the other hand, could have an absolutely huge week. You got Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. 
Uh, Mike Williams went off last week against the Rams, and now he gets a 49ers defense, which is nowhere near the quality of the Rams defense. So if you have either one of these guys, Keenan Allen, obvious must start for you. Not talking into that. Mike Williams is a solid flex play with wide receiver two upside, and I'm starting him also this week. Ravens at Steelers is next, so we'll start off with the trio in Baltimore. You got Michael Crabtree, John Brown, and Slick Willie Sneed. Now, I'm going to continue this. I'm not going to jump off the bandwagon or the anti-bandwagon that I've been on all preseason. I'm still going never crabs. I don't want Michael Crabtree in my lineup. If you have him, I'm, I'm personally trying to trade him. I want nothing to do with him because all I do is have expectations come Sundays, and if he doesn't get the touchdown, I'm usually let down. John Brown seems to be the clear top target in that offense for Joe Flacco, has the big playability, capable of you know taking a short route and taking it the distance for the touchdown, has more of a touchdown upside right now than anybody else in the offense. I like John Brown. I'm starting him as a flex this week. Willie Sneed, too inconsistent for me. Uh, unless there's an injury to one of these guys I've already talked about, Willie Sneed staying on the bench. If you own him, you probably don't. He's probably on waivers for a reason. The Steelers basically still are continuing the whole changing of the guard process here there, and it looks like Juju Smith-Schuster is all of a sudden one of the best receivers in all of football, and actually taking over Antonio Brown. Maybe not talent or skill-wise, but production-wise, Juju is all over it. They're going to have to throw the ball in Pittsburgh. They're going to want to throw the ball in Pittsburgh, and Juju is going to be a great option. You can't sit Antonio Brown. Both these guys must start this week. Monday night game, you got the Chiefs at the Broncos, and if you have somebody on the Chiefs, you're starting them. Tyreek Hill is a wide receiver, too, uh, at worst with upside. Sammy Watkins has also moved into the the, uh, solid weekly flex play. You just can't go against Patrick Mahomes anymore. The kid is for real. He's playing out of his mind, and and we're going to ride this wave as long as possible. If you have a Chiefs offensive player, you're going to start him. That's how good they are, and yeah, I'm starting both these guys. The Broncos, on the other hand, have kind of been struggling and inconsistent throwing the ball. They can't really get anything going running or passing, and it's kind of just led to a little bit of frustration. Now, Emmanuel Sanders has been the more consistent option and will continue to be. Now, this is not a solid Chiefs defense by any means, and they should be able to have their way with them there on the defensive end. Also a plus, the Chiefs are going to put up points, so Denver is going to be forced to throw the ball all four quarters. I do like both of these guys in Denver this week. Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders are both wide receiver twos for me here for week four. All right, so there's about 40 wide receivers we just covered here in a short amount of time talking about all the week four matchups. Any other questions, make sure you comment them down below. Obviously, I can't get to them like I've said here the past few weeks. Can't get to all of them. I get to as many of the thousands and thousands as I can, but I really like what I'm seeing here. The community is really starting to grow. Reach out, help each other talk to each other, be respectful to each other. And I really appreciate the support on this channel. I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, subscribing. We'll talk to you later and uh, good luck here for week four.